I just got deceived. I mean, I've always, if you can have a favorite name, name for the devil, I've always said he's the great deceiver. Yeah. And anybody can go down. I don't care who you are. Mm-hmm. And, but I didn't, think I, I didn't think I would, you know. And, I, and it's just a, it's a crazy story. All my friends who, who were older went to school, went off to college, and then I just, I lost my way. And I thought I could play with the fire and not get burned. And then all of a sudden, I'm trapped. I'm literally trapped. And it's the crazy thing is, is because I remember getting high with people and I would be talking about Jesus. Mm. And they'd all go, wow, man, that's really cool. You know, <laughs> I mean, it sounds weird, but I knew that God had a call in my life. And I knew that there was a destiny for my life. And so I never could shake that. I never totally just, I never totally disowned him. I was just partying, just doing crazy stuff, you know, making bad choices. Yeah. Cool thing is my mom and dad never condemned me. Mm-hmm. Ever, ever. They never threw me out of the bus. I was always welcome home. I know it hurt my mom and dad. That's what hurt me. And I could tell in their faces mm-hmm. that they were grie- They weren't mad. They were, they were grieving for me. So... Basically, I just continued to sort of spiral, spiral, spiral down, and I'm, I'm in this. I felt like I was in a big pit, and there was no ladder to get out. And then I, I had a near drug overdose in 1978, and that's, and I almost lost my life. And that's when I thought, Oh my gosh, Lord, do whatever you have to do mm. to get my attention. Mm. Car wreck, break my legs, just don't kill me. Yeah, I'd say those kind of prayers. <laughs> and I knew my mom and dad were on their knees yeah. every single night for me, oh. if not in the morning as well. And then 1979, November of 79, I had a, I probably had a nervous breakdown. I never went to the doctor, but I ended up on the linoleum floor in my apartment in Nashville. And I wept and shook for three and a half hours. Mm-hmm. And at 3.30 in the morning, I just, I, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Abba was laying on the floor with his arm around me. Mm-hmm. And I haven't been the same since. <laughs> it all changed. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm convinced that it was the prayers of my mom and dad. Yeah. He knew I was in trouble, so he, he thought if he said, he, did, he was so careful not to say anything that might make me wander even further. Right. Mm-hmm. But I remember on that front porch, I went out there, he asked me to come out there, and I'm sitting, and I just knew it was coming, you know. <laughs> and he, he just said, son, he said, you're going to have to pull it together. And you're going to have to stop doing this stuff. You've got to pull it together. And I just remember just going, I know, Dad. I know. I just, I was, my head was down and I was trying not to cry. And, and that's all he said. That's all he said. And then we got walked back in the house. Maybe, maybe think of that image of Abba the Father with his arm around me mm-hmm. and all these awful things I was doing for four years. He just... He just wants to love you. He just wants to be your friend. Yeah. You know, that's what he wants. That, that's what he wants. Yeah. Well, I was, um, I was actually in Atlanta trying to get to South Africa was what happened. And they, I, didn't have, um, I didn't have enough pages in my You had passport. zero pages I, left. Yeah, yeah. and I, I never knew that was an issue. You just stamp beside wherever you were on another, on, on the page of, of Nigeria or whatever. <laughs> and so she said, no, they're not, they're not going to let you in. And so... In the past, um, that would that would have bothered me a little bit, <laughs> and uh, I would have been upset. And I just thought, you know, remember my team went on, and that we're going to put you in a hotel, and we're going to we'll put you, get you on the net. We'll go get you on the flight the next day. You go in Atlanta and get your passport renewed. And so I did. And I remember walking out of the airport, going, I "Wonder what you have in mind? Mm-hmm. Why am I missing my flight?" And uh, I got in an Uber car with a gentleman, and it's all in the book. And um, he wanted to know what I was doing. How was, how was your flight? I go, well, I'm supposed to be on a flight to South Africa. And he's going, well, why are you not on your flight to South Africa? So I tried to give him the short story. And what do you do? And I told him what I did. He said, oh, I, I went to church camp, you know. I got married and kind of, kind of walked away from the Lord, and, you know. And it was a really incredible conversation. And uh, he he kind of went, what's your story then? And I just told him about this, that I had this massive encounter with Christ that changed my life, you know. And um, so we get like 30 seconds from the hotel and he stops his car. He stops his car and he turns around and he says, okay, I've got 30 seconds left with you. <laughs> Would you please tell me what an encounter with Christ means? And so he slowly, he probably took 60 seconds to get to the lobby. He slowly, and I just told him. I just told him about the father heart of 
God, you know, and, um, and he pulls up, he said, well, I had a pastor in my car two days ago. Hmm. I've got you in my car today. I think God is trying to tell me something. And I said, I'm going to pray for you. I will never forget you because I think there's a call of God on your life. I said, bless you. And I got, and I walked into the lobby and I went, that's why I missed my flight. <laughs> and then the next day, the whole other story, I st- they still wouldn't give me my passport. And oh gosh, it was, it was insane, it, all the details. So I think uh, the devil could have been at play on some of that, but whatever. I finally, I finally found myself on a plane and landing in Cape Town and finally getting to the, um, get, get, I think it was Joe Berg actually, and, and arriving in about 70 minutes before I was go, supposed to go on stage. And uh, it was an amazing night. So yeah, just, you know, God's in all of that. You just have to just, uh, he, he, I think that was, that's what he wanted to happen. Uh, maybe this is your time, this moment. So he loves you, not only loves you, he likes you, he's very fond of you. And I believe he's got a call in your life. So there's a beautiful thing about surrendering your life to, to, to the Lord. And um, I promise you, you won't regret it. And you will have a life like you've never had before. Doesn't mean you won't have trials and tribulations. There'll be, we all have stuff that we go through, but God will give you the strength to get through whatever battle or whatever adversity you've had, especially in this past year. So... Even what the enemy means for, it means for evil, he turns it for the good. And even in the valley, he's working for our good. I know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. So I'm praying for you, for all of you who are watching, and I will continue to do so.